Hey friends, Isaac here. It's Tuesday, January 4th. Welcome to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. This is the podcast where we live the dream of people of every nation, tribe and tongue worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. Thank you for subscribing, reviewing and sharing the show. Kevin's newest book, Get to the Point, was an instant international bestseller. Get to the Point is available worldwide in paperback, hardback, ebook and audiobook. It is a practical guide for passionately pursuing God's presence. Every guidance and provision you will ever need can be found today in the presence of God. Visit kevinwhite.us to read and gift, get to the point, and Kevin's first book, Audacious Generosity, today. Today, Kevin is joined by Temsela Bass of Nashville, North Carolina. Temsela is a sister in Christ, friend and board member for Global Hope India. Put your hands together and let's welcome Kevin and Temsela to today's show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Live in the Dream Show. It's January the 4th, 2022. And look at the screen if you're on YouTube. We're going to say Happy New Year. One, two, three. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> yes, Happy New Year. I'm Kevin White. I'm born here in North Carolina. My co host, Timsala, is from 8,000 miles away, born and made in India. Welcome to the show, Timsala. How are you? Thank you. Happy New Good. Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. And Happy last New week, year. you introduced us to Nalisha and Melvin from South Africa, born and made in South Africa. Happy New Year to you. How are you? Happy New Year to you. Uh, it's good to have you back on the show. If you are watching on YouTube, you can see us. We're waving at you. We are happy to have you in the audience today. And if you're listening wherever podcasts can be heard, we are so thankful that you are listening in. We had a wonderful, beautiful conversation last week as we talked about the differences of Christmas celebration and holiday celebrations in general. I learned a lot about uh, even the reality of it being summertime as Christmas is celebrated in South Africa, and I can't wait to learn what we're going to today. But it is New Year's, and so we're going to find out what New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day is like. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give a very quick nutshell of my tradition. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, we would go to what we would call a watch night service uh, at the church, and we would bring in the new year uh, with a time of singing and worship and prayer. And then the men would go out and here in North Carolina, you can bear arms. You can So the men would have their shotgun and they would go out at right around midnight and they would all shoot off their shotgun together uh, with loud booms and everything. Uh, we were in the rural area of North Carolina and there weren't the fireworks that maybe you see around in, in the area of, of the cities and stuff now. And so that was the, the country fireworks to shoot off the guns together. Together like that and then there would be some snack and then we would go home many times as a small child I didn't even make it I would fall asleep before midnight and things like that uh, but then the next day it was all about family and food and football here in the uh, USA the American football uh, not the Asian soccer but we we would we would bring in the the new year uh, like that Timsala what was New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and the celebration of New Year's like in India? For us, a lot of the time, just like in Christmas, the church and uh, a lot of eating, food, family time, and even picnic, going on a picnic and, you know, the whole church party. These days, the whole church party, we go on a picnic and uh, we eat together, have church service at the site. And those are the things, just family time, getting together. And some people get to wear new clothes and stuff like that. But other than that, you know, uh, I guess it's, I think Nate and I have come to a point where it's like, uh, rather than following a tradition, uh, how do we, you know, do something that's for our own family that 
uh, f with our children, what are the things that we want them to, you know, cultivate or how, what, in what way can we invest on? And so those are the things that we do. I mean, traditionally, that's what we grew up with. What about you and uh, uh, Nelisha, mm -hmm. Nelly? What about yeah. you and- Yeah, how was New Year's Nelly? Day and celebrated in yeah. South Africa? Well, because we, you know, we said much of our lives evolved around the church and growing up in church, you know, being se second generation in a Christian home. Um, we also went to watch night service and, mm. uh, you know, watch night service started at 10 o'clock. You know, we would, uh, growing up, we always went, started about 10 o'clock, it was worship and praise and then down on our, down on our knees from mm. about 12 uh, 11 45 to about 11 50 we praying right until the new year mm. so we're mm. praying on our, on our knees and we're praying into the new year praying in the new year mm -hmm. and then at you know 12 o'clock someone will ring a bell or a siren or whatever and we all come together and greet each other sing a nice praise song all together in the church and you know find our parents and our loved ones well Growing up, it was find our parents and uh, sisters and brothers. But when we got married, it was finding each other in the church because, you know, Melvin and I were both uh, working in church. So he would be in another part of the church while I'm, you know, in the front and stuff. It's just finding each other, make sure we greet that special person in our lives first for the new year. Mm -hmm. And then outside of church is fireworks. Mm. And, you know, that's part of our Indian culture. Mm -hmm. It's part of, uh, you know, it's part, remember, it's uh, in, in Christmas. Um, Sorry, Christmas, New Year, it's summertime. It's part of the excitement and all the, you know, joy of summer and, and everything that's going on, the heat. So it's fireworks outside. And then after that, everyone would go out and, you know, be with their families and things like that in the New Year to try to get some sleep before we get up in the morning and guess where we're heading to. Yeah. If you remember from the beach. last podcast, we're heading to the beach. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, we're taking our food and family and just the whole family, extended families, cousins and uncles and aunties, neighbors. Um, whether you have a car or not, everybody is going to the beach. Mm -hmm. So you get into someone else's car or, you know, growing up, get into the back of their of their trucks, which we call bakis. Like a truck is called a baki. So, get, you know, get in the back of a baki and, you know, growing up, you know, in the 19, in 19th South Africa, there wasn't so much of uh, restrictions about safety and all of that. So children would sit in the back of a bucky with the responsible adults, and we all head to the beach and you know mm -hmm. have have it some time together. Um, mm. That's what it was about, and it was about family and just being and friends and being with one another. And New Year's resolutions, mm. of course. Yeah, I think on my side, I think well for me, what what stands out the most is. Uh, our communities, what we used to do, well, well, all of us growing up, we should look forward to kind of missing and, and playing fun and thanks, games. Thanks. So, so what we should do is, for the day, uh, so on the thirty first, uh, for the entire day, we would go to the to the market, the store market, and we would get like uh, soft uh, vegetables, tomatoes. We'll get old paint, uh, and we get all the stuff ready because once it once it comes towards New Year's, we all go on the road and we're running and start missing each other. So. We throw throw paint at each other and we mess each other with with rotten tomatoes and and just mess about and have fun and um, and so all the kids in the community so even in, in some cases they used to for the roads that weren't the main um, street uh, you know they used to kind of close off the roads and have like this fun and game of smashing uh, vegetables on people and just as just as, as and a, eggs and <laughs> eggs and whatever but but basically all the kids. <laughs> All the kids used to come, basically return home like an hour later, and they should all be fully messed up, needed to have a proper bath uh, afterwards. Kind of that. I, I mean, for, for me, that that always stands out because that's what that's kind of the most fun we used to have at the time. I mean, obviously, we used to we used to also go to church and 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 spend the New Year's Day uh, kind of a family, but the the biggest thing we used to wait for was messing messing all our friends and just going crazy. With. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I love it. I love it. Uh, lots of similarity, lots of differences. It's all beautiful. And that's really the point of these episodes uh, during the holidays throughout the month of December. And now on January the 4th, uh, we are just taking time to be gentle, uh, to be humble about our heritage 
uh, and our culture and gentle uh, and willingness to learn and listen and appreciate and value other people's heritage and their culture. Um, we, we all want to celebrate the holiday. Uh, Japan uh, celebrates the new year. China celebrates the new year. Vietn Vietnam celebrates the new year. On and on and on. Bangladesh, uh, Afghanistan, Russia, Canada, Mexico, uh, nations all around the world celebrate the new year, but they're not all the same. Uh, some are celebrated with Christian traditions. Others are traditions of other religions. Some are celebrated without any sense of God or the presence of God at all. And, and so let's just, before we end the episode, just concentrate on the word anticipation. We opened up the show with Happy New Year! And with that comes anticipation. And I really want to exchange that with everyone in the audience um, maybe you're hurting today. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're fearful about 2022. Maybe it's not a sense of happiness uh, for you. Maybe, maybe now that it's January the 4th, the high has come and now it's sort of back to reality. And yet there's something that on the Live in the Dream show um, that we have to offer because of what God has done in our life that builds our mm. anticipation, our expectation. So how was it growing up? We've talked about watch night services. We talked about um, church traditions and everything. When you think of anticipation going into the new year, what do you think about? We'll start with you, Tim mm. Anything come to mind? I, you know, with all the, not just what you are asking with the anticipation, it's, I mean, I anticipate to, and look forward to what God has in store mm -hmm. for 2022. So yeah. I look forward with joy mm -hmm. to what God is going to do. And right. so that's one thing, but the other thing that I have been, you know, really convicted this past couple of weeks as we have celebrated so many holidays and so many different things, celebrations, having learned from different things, just hearing from people is um, choosing to speak blessings on the lives of others mm -hmm. on all occasions, whether it's to our children or whether it's to our family, our spouse or to people around, even whether it's during their special time, like our daughters uh, celebrated their, uh, one of our daughters celebrated her birthday in December. And, uh, you know, a couple of friends, their friends came and they just spoke words of blessing to her, mm -hmm. you know, one after the other. And it's something I, I, God has been just putting it heavy in my heart that that's, the thing that we all need as we look forward with anticipation to this whole year of 2022, that making a choice to speak uh, blessing on the life of others. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to look at the fall or it's very easy to look at the negative part of it. But no, I'm choosing to speak blessings on the life of others and even to our children as well. You know, let them sit down and um, speak words of blessings on their life and even to our spouse or to everybody around us that we come into contact so that we are, we become a sweet aroma for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I think that's what I'm looking forward to. Not just, it's not a new year resolution, but it is um, making abiding a lifestyle. Abiding mm -hmm. in Christ, a lifestyle. What about for you guys, Nalisha? You know, um, Kev, Kevin, you alluded, alluded to the fact that, you know, all cultures are celebrating the new year. Mm -hmm. And uh, no matter what we are as different cultures and all the different uh, things that we, we, we do, you know, in terms of how we eat, how we dress and how we look, all of us look at new with hope. If something is new, there's hope that it can be better. And I think after what the whole planet has been through in this last two years, um, we all look to this new year with anticipation of hope mm -hmm. that it's going to be okay. You know, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And us as Christians, um, as you know, as, as believers, as the body of Christ, if we can just show that there's hope in Christ, that there's peace in Christ, uh, everybody has hope, but their hope is lost. It lost so easily because not everybody has Christ as mm -hmm. that solid foundation. So if we can just show that, mm -hmm. that peace in knowing him, you know, that surrender in knowing him Good in point. our cultures, you know, and yeah, yeah, you know, just be restful in that peace. Um, we all have that, to use that one thing that we all have in common, but that you use that as a way to say, you know what? Yes, we have hope in common, but you know what? Hope can be so much more. Mm -hmm. It can restore. Mm -hmm. It can fill you up. It can, um, you know, it, it can be so much to you than just something. Uh, because if we make, leave our hope in, in a New Year's resolution, everybody's New Year's resolution ends about a month in, especially mm -hmm. the gym one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know uh, mm -hmm. but, but if we uh, you know place our hope in 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 what is above that's good you know in yeah. something that's um, long-standing in something that is uh, fruitful uh, mm -hmm. you know place our hope in, in 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 god you know and if we can show that that there's longevity in you know placing your hope in christ yeah melvin how about you Anything yeah so else? um last night i I shared that uh, I was teaching a Bible site last night, and there was a saying by Tony Evans that kind of stuck out. It, it said that when things around you are going bad, they might actually be going, uh, they might actually be good. Mm -hmm. And uh, true. And and it went on to say that uh, for 365 days in any year, God is running a positive program where all things work together. For mm -hmm. the good. Yeah. He doesn't have a negative program. He doesn't have a uh, wait and see a maybe program he runs a full positive program every day of the year mm -hmm. and so no matter what you're going through god is somehow whether you make a mistake or whether you, you made a bad decision or whatever god is somehow putting that into a positive program and working something out mm -hmm. so that you can have not just a new year's resolution but you can have a, it can positively impact you in the long term mm -hmm. your family your career um, your home i mean whatever uh, but that positive program is open to everyone uh, in the world. Uh, if they just obviously if they give it out to the Lord and, and trust Him, and you know, uh, He can make it a, a, a sustainable hope for eternity. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And my point in asking us about that is that we share some very common phrases around the holidays, but not everyone receives those phrases in the same way. And you made that point, each of you, as you were sharing about uh, the anticipation of the, of the new year. And we, as the followers of Christ, have an opportunity. Sometimes we think witnessing is giving the plan of salvation, and it is. And it's, it's praying the sinner's prayer, and it is. And it's inviting people to church, and it is. But sometimes witnessing is Merry Christmas because people don't always use Merry Christmas. They might say Happy Holidays, or they might say Merry Christmas and be oblivious to Jesus Christ. Even Americans can, can be guilty of that. But most, most countries around the world celebrate Happy New Year. And, and that's a desire of every person with a heartbeat that this new year would be happy. It would be prosperous. It would be uh, peaceful. It would be um, full of health instead of sickness and full of uh, financial gain instead of losses and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. We could do that. But when we say that as a believer, we say that with a promise of God. Uh, as Melvin just said, it's mm -hmm. not that everybody is going to stay healthy, that there's never going to be any sickness, no problems, because nothing can be further mm -hmm. from the truth even for believers, but we can have a sense as we have all had in 2020 and 2021 with COVID-19 and now in 2022, that our God is an ever-present help in time of need, in time of trouble, in time of pain. And so we can say Happy New Year with anticipation of His faithfulness. 
with hope of, of him being true to his word, that he is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. And, and so uh, I just want to admonish all of us, believers or not, to, to really have the opportunity, take the opportunity to wish each other uh, a happy new year to t apply the verse that we shared last week about bearing with each other. But I've got a, another verse I just want to uh, end with, and maybe Thimsala has something else. Uh, but Jesus was saying, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And that is a contextual verse of the body of Christ. Your love for each other, the brothers and sisters in this church, will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And sometimes we think that means your love for the people that look just like you will prove that you are my disciples. But as we see in Revelation 7, 9 through 12, Jesus is literally saying your love for people that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation of a different skin color a different nationality, a different heritage, a different language. Your love for them will prove that you are my disciples. Now that takes it to a whole new level. A whole new level. And that's, that's what living the dream is all about. Thimsala, any last words before we close out today's episode? I just wanted to read from Psalms 91. Okay. We want to episode it, uh, close the episode with the uh, passage from Psalm 91 and for every listeners please take that as a word of blessings for each one of us a promise that God has given to us and it goes this way he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snares of the fowlers and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walk in darkness nor of the destruction that lays waste of at noonday a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the lord who is my refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpents you shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Mm. This is the word of the Lord. Yes, what a promise for 2022. And I just hope everyone in the audience will receive this. This is not just uh, your friends on the Living the Dream show uh, having wishful, warm, fuzzy thoughts for you, but this is the Word of God over your life today. Well, uh, what a joy it's been to get to know Melvin and Nalisha. Thank you so much for being Nelly. on the show. Yes. And Timsala, thanks for introducing us. We'll see you next week on Living the Dream. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to the Living the Dream show with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us.
or subscribe for free through your favourite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is copyright, Kevin White International, all rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of living the dream as people of every nation, tribe and tongue worship Jesus together on earth today, as it already is in heaven. Remembering the gift of God's presence through Jesus Christ is accessible to everyone. Join us again next week for Living the Dream with Kevin White. Living the Dream with Kevin White.